Good afternoon, everyone. It's so delighted to see you all here and to join us to celebrate this special event for the election of the Professor John Sutherland um, into the National Academy of Engineering. Um, to start the program, it's my great pleasure to invite Dr. Patrick Wolf, our provost and executive vice president of academic affair and diversity come to the stage. Uh, it's great to see everybody here today on a, uh, well, it might not be a lovely Friday afternoon weather-wise, but we're, uh, we're better off inside celebrating. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna occupy the podium for too long, uh, just really to say, uh, an enormous thank you and congratulations to John, AKA Professor Sutherland, uh, for his election into the National Academy of Engineering. Um, you'll probably know that uh, the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine are our you know, national learned societies. Uh, the earliest of these dates all the way back to the Morrill Act. So if you think about Purdue's founding as a land-grant institution, that was the beginning of our learned societies. And these follow on a long tradition in countries like the United Kingdom, where we have the Royal Society and, and many others like it. And so John, uh, John uh, enters into uh, a very uh, great set of esteemed colleagues from not just around the rest of Purdue, there's some names up here of other inductees, but indeed around the rest of the country and the rest of the world, uh, I think we have about uh, 2,400 members of the academies across the United States right now. And every year, I think this year, we elected about, you know, we meaning all across engineering from a set of peers, elected 120 or so new members and another 20 or so from outside the United States. Um, just to tell you a, a tiny bit about uh, about Professor Sutherland's career. Uh, I couldn't do it justice in this short time at the podium, um, but he came to Purdue in 2009, and uh, he came to serve as the first permanent head of environmental and ecological engineering, and he pretty much reimagined, I think it's fair to say, reinvented uh, that department, that effort, um, really from the ground up. And so it's with immense pride and pleasure uh, that we celebrate his induction of the Academy on the basis of his revolutionary ideas for considerations of environmental factors and sustainability in manufacturing. Uh, I know a little bit about manufacturing. It's, it's, it's sort of far from my area in, in uh, electrical and computer engineering and mathematics, uh, but I know enough to know that uh, everything from the materials that we use in manufacturing uh, the processes that we use when we think about manufacturing, and indeed the design and the layout of all the processes, controls, and the, entire, the entirety of manufacturing considered together uh, has immense opportunities for improvements in consideration of, an, of the environment and of sustainability. And that's really in, uh, in sort of uh, you know, non-engineering language, uh, a short distillation of what, what John's been recognized for through his contributions. Um, I'll just say a few other things. Um, it's very, very rare for us to find eminent scholars who are willing to come to a place like Purdue and invest time in building up a department, building up a school, building up an intellectual area, and building it out, up and out at the same time, you know, while keeping their science going. When I was thinking about all of the names uh, um, of Purdue National Academy of Engineering members uh, on the uh, on the picture up here at the front, I was thinking about how, and many of you are in the audience, I was thinking about just how unique it is to have the opportunity over the course of a long career to contribute scientifically and intellectually to the life of the university, but also to give of yourself your own time and wisdom and, uh, and thinking and expertise to help make the whole the whole place around you sort of that much better. Uh, so again, I, I, uh, I won't uh, keep you from the next serving of uh, hors d'oeuvres and coffee and cake and things like that. Uh, and so please join me, of course, though, in, in thanking and honoring uh, Professor John Sutherland. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Wolf. Now I would like to invite John A. Edwardson, Dean 
of College of Engineering, Dean Arvind Raman, to the stage. Hi, everyone. I'm really thrilled to be here on this momentous occasion um, honoring uh, Professor John Sutherland's election into the National Academy of Engineering. I think this honor uh, really speaks to and reflects on John's decades-long leadership in establishing the field of economic system, environmental sustainability in manufacturing through his pathbreaking research, industry partnerships, education, and national and international service. Indeed, his accomplishments reflect and advance the highest ideals of our land-grant mission and Purdue Engineering's goal to really maximize our impact. Now, a few things about John's research, we might go a little deeper into it and the impact it has had. John's research in the early 1990s really transformed machining operations. That's where the impact really began with our nation's leading manufacturers. He partnered first with Ford, Ford Motor Company uh, to cut, to reduce their, was there Ford? Is there a person from <laughs> Ford here? All right, great, round of applause. That, that's what we mean by, you know, by industry impact. He partnered with the Ford Motor Company to reduce their uh, cutting fluid usage, which was linked to a variety of uh, environmental and health uh, concerns. And he helped them transition to what is today known as dry or nearly dry machining, a big, big impact. John also collaborated with General Motors. Um, <laughs> to, to, to characterize particulate matter emissions associated with their production operations and to introduce air quality measures to better protect the health of their company's employees. John was also an early champion of the circular economy and collaborated with companies such as Caterpillar. Any Caterpillar people here? <laughs> Sorry, my expectations are kind of high here. <laughs> you know, like half the Forbes 500 here or something. Um, but really, the idea of this uh, circular economy was uh, to help industry in ways to close material loops in their process and, and rethink how end-of-life products are actually managed. And his work on the circular economy over the, last, over the next three decades really transformed our understanding of economic opportunities and environmental benefits and value recovery from what has historically been regarded as waste streams. This has been a huge impact. In recent years, John has produced seminal work in green manufacturing planning, a paradigm that puts environment at the center of production scheduling and process planning decisions. And he continues to push the envelope. Having helped make environmental sustainability a critical manufacturing consideration over the past three decades, he is now championing social sustainability as another key performance measure for manufacturing systems. John's contributions to engineering education have been equally influential. He has instructed thousands of students in engineering courses and mentored over 100 graduate students to the completion of their degrees. And these students, of course, in turn, are having a tremendous impact on the world. His textbook, Statistical Quality Design and Control, Contemporary Concepts and Methods, became a standard in the field for a generation of students and scholars. His more recent book on energy efficient manufacturing theory and applications has proven to be a critical resource uh, for those exploring sustainable manufacturing. And as the first permanent head of environmental and ecological engineering at Purdue, John helped forge a curriculum that is truly unique in the nation in how it combines environmental engineering and industrial sustainability. Through his visionary leadership, Triple E has grown to encompass and comprise 19 faculty over 170 undergraduate students, and nearly 60 graduate students pursuing an MS or PhD program. John has indeed accumulated a long list of honors in recognition of his pioneering accomplishments. He's a recipient of the prestigious Frederick George Poland Medal, which is bestowed jointly by the Association of Environmental Engineering and Science Professors and the American Academy of Environmental Engineers and Scientists. He was recently elected fellow of the American Association of Advancement of Science. John has been also honored by the Society of Manufacturing Engineers Gold Medal, highest uh, honor in that society, as well as their education award. The American Society of Mechanical Engineers William Inner Manufacturing Technology Award and SAE International's John Connor Environmental Award. 
To this long list, we can now add member of the National Academy of Engineering. Now, if you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to go out and check out. We have a, we have a, um, a banner hanging on the southeast corner of, um, of uh, Potter Engineering Center uh, to celebrate John's election to the NAE. Congratulations, John. You are an inspiration to all of us. appreciate everyone being here. This is about as much fun to me as going to the dentist, so uh, I do appreciate your support. Um, it was nice of, of Arvind to make these comments, and I'm going to try to add a little bit more, um, and I will endeavor to remember the famous FDR quote, be sincere, be brief, be seated. Um, it, I was indeed uh, shocked and, of course, honored to be elected to the National Academy of Engineering. Um, and I want to add just a little bit to the backstory that uh, Arvin, Arvin uh, told us up here, as well as some of the comments by the provost. Um, my background, uh, my training, is in industrial and mechanical engineering. And uh, I focused on manufacturing. Uh, in fact, my PhD, that I've, you know, I've known some of these folks like Chandi and Young Shin uh, since the 80s, that uh, my PhD was focused on the dynamics of the, of the end milling process. So um, along the way in, in, uh, as a PhD student, I helped my advisor deliver many industry short courses on statistical process control. In that capacity, I became very familiar with the teachings of W. Edwards Deming related to quality engineering. Um, and I'll just add that in those days, companies often addressed their quality challenges through inspection. Uh, their goal was to filter out the defectives and stop them from going to the customer. So Deming came along and he said, well, we should identify and eliminate the, the root causes of these problems in the process and focus uh, focus on get, getting after those faults and, that are causing the defectives in the first place. And I think that uh, history showed that over time uh, Deming's perspective was right, uh, that going after the root causes of these faults has the additional benefit of not only improving quality but of reducing costs and improving productivity. So when I started as a faculty member with this backdrop and thinking about Deming and so forth, and I was talking to a colleague um, maybe it was someone at Ford at that point. Um, they were a little exasperated because here the, this poor environmental engineer was having to clean up all, spend all their time cleaning up after the manufacturing people, all these waste streams that manufacturing was creating. So uh, environmental engineers, as I came to understand, they had to develop add-on engineering systems to contain, control, treat waste streams so as to reduce the amount uh, and uh, toxicity of waste that was being discharged or released to from the manufacturing facilities. So I thought about that and I realized, well, this is exactly what Deming was talking about and what we should be doing instead of containing, treating, and mitigating these waste streams is going after the root causes of these problems. So at that point, I decided uh, that I would start doing research to uh, combat these sources of waste in manufacturing. And I think over time I've, I've been able to help a lot of companies not only uh, reduce their environmental impact but be more competitive in addition. So there's a lot of people I want to thank. Um, I, I need to be very grateful to the uh, faculty and staff of Triple E. They've had to put up with me for, for many years, as they sometimes point out to me. Um, I believe that we've created a department that seamlessly blends industrial sustainability as well as classic environmental engineering. Um, we've grown our department uh, um, ten years. Uh, uh, ten years ago we graduated our first group of ten students. This, this time around we've got six times that many, so we've grown by a factor of six in ten years. Uh, it's great to see Leah here. Thank you for hiring me. Um, <laughs> I'm very thankful to you, and I, I want to um, make a, a special thank you to the Faisenfeld family for their unwavering support as well. 
I've got a number of other people I'd like to thank. Uh, my family has always been supportive. This includes my, she, she likes when I say long-suffering in front of it, long-suffering wife, Brenda, um, my daughters, Jenny and Beth, and of course my parents. Um, I had many fantastic mentors over the years, including my advisor, Richard DeVore. Uh, great colleagues, both here and in my previous uh, positions, Fu Zhao, uh, Walt Olson, Jim Mahelsik, David Schonard, Carol Handworker, Nate Hartman, Larry Nice, to name just a few. Um, we all, all of us engaged in, in research at universities know that we have um, a lot to owe. We owe a lot to our, our graduate students, and I've been really fortunate to work with many amazing graduate students over the years. Um, in this recognition will not be possible without their creativity and dedication. So thank you all very much. Uh, it's great to see you all here today. I really appreciate you coming. Wow, what a remarkable and inspiring journey, right? John is not only outstanding academic thought leader and also uh, really uh, inspiring academic leader built an entire program and inspired over, touched upon over a thousand students' life. You know, that's what we say, the pinnacle of excellence at scale. Thank you, congratulations again, John. I was just gonna say, before, before you step up and uh, go, we have something else here, uh, it's a surprise. Uh, for John, so if please stay seated just for a few more minutes here, uh, as we. Um, uh, so, uh, John, we have a special surprise for you, <laughs> and um, and yeah, it, traditionally, at least in recent years, uh, Purdue Engineering has awarded a crystal ball uh, to any faculty member who is elected into the National Academy of Engineering, um, and it is my honor here to present to you. Uh, the crystal ball, John, uh, for your remarkable achievement, uh, election into the National Academy of Engineering, for your pioneering research uh, in economic, uh, in environmental uh, sustainability of manufacturing. I think there's something about the meeting today we had with your, uh, with your board that's making me think about this because it's, uh, let me blame them for it. But, <laughs> but um, environmental sustainability in manufacturing and its implementation in industry. Um, Please, John. Or in front? Yeah, let's stand in front. Yeah, be careful. Oh, Jesus. Let's shake hands. It's not locked down. 